Dear friends, we are going to discuss the questions asked in JE mains in February session on on a model physics topic and uh, wave optics. Okay, the first question there we are going to pick is that the ratio of intensity of two coherent sources is a uh, given two uh, x. Then find out the ratio maximum and minimum. We have to find the ratio of i maximum plus i minimum and i maxim minus i minimum okay now by the concept of uh, uh, interference we know that i maximum equal to root i1 plus root i2 whole square and i minimum is equal to root i1 minus root i2 whole square and you can write i maximum divided by i minimum as uh, a root i1 divided by root i2 plus 1 divided by root i1 Divided by root i two minus one whole square. Okay, and they are saying the i one by i two is equal to two x. The root i one by root i two is root two x plus one whole square divided by root two x minus one whole square. Okay? Now we want to know okay, what is the real relation. We can use simple mathematics. That is. The root two x plus one whole square divided by root two x minus one whole square minus one root two x plus one whole square divided by root two x minus one whole square minus one. Okay. <clears throat> Simply put this value here. Okay. And if you expand this, you'll find the value like this: two uh, x plus one two root two x minus two uh, x minus one plus two root two x, two x plus one similarly at the bottom. And you'll find the values four root two x divided by four x plus two. And if you cancel two, two root two x divided by two x plus one. Okay, the answer will be A. In this type of question, we can use one more trick here. Okay, the trick is like this. If they're saying the intensity is uh, I one by I two is two x. Let's say x equal to four, x equal to two, we can assume. If you're assuming x equal to two, then you can say uh, x equal to two, and i one by i two is equal to four, and i one is equal to four i two, and they want to know what is the value of i maximum plus i minimum divided by i maximum minus i minimum. Okay, and uh, you know it very well that uh, i maximum is root i one plus root i two whole square. <coughs> Value will be like uh, i plus two i. Okay, this is i maximum. Try the value of i maximum here. Root i one plus root i two whole square. That is i plus root i plus two root i whole square. This value will be like uh, I think nine uh, i, and i minimum will be like two root i. Minus root i whole square. That value will be like i. Okay, i maximum plus i minimum. That value will be like nine i plus i ten i, and nine i minus i. That is eight i. Value will be like i cancel and uh, five by four. If x equal to two, the value will be four five by four. So put here two root two x equal to two. Uh, Simple two here, two x four plus one, two into two divided by five and four by five. Okay, <clears throat> this value will be like two into two plus one. So, uh, says in I think there must be some the reciprocal relation must be there. Okay. Next, uh, the two radiative substances X and Y having N1 and N2 nuclei initially, the half-life of X is half of that of Y. After uh, three half-lives of Y, the number of undecayed nuclei X and Y become equal, then find the value of N1 by N2. And think I think is like this. There, there's one reaction of X, and one reaction of Y. X has N1 and X, Y has N2 nuclei. Uh, the half life of x is half of half life of y. Okay, so half life of x. So if you have y ka t assume, so x is simply t by two. Three half life of y. The 
इसके थ्री हाफ लाइफ कंप्लीट होंगे तो श्योरली अगर थ्री हाफ लाइफ होंगे तो इसका जो रिलेशन होगा वो एंड टू बाई एट हो जाएगा और जितनी देर में इसका थ्री हाफ लाइफ कंप्लीट होता है उतनी देर में इसके सिक्स हाफ लाइफ कंप्लीट होंगे तो ये वैल्यू हो जाएगी एन वन इंटू वन बाई टू टू पावर सिक्स तो ये वैल्यू बच्चे आपके पास कितनी आ जाएगी एन वन बाय सिक्सटी फोर एट दिस मोमेंट नंबर ऑफ वन डीके निकलाया से तो एन वन के एन वन बाय सिक्सटी फोर हो गए एन टू के एन टू बाई एट हो गए तो वैल्यू लाइक एन वन बाय सिक्सटी फोर इज इक्वल टू एन टू बाई एट एंड एन टू इज इक्वल टू और इफ्तियास एन वन इज इक्वल टू एट एन टू so they are asking what the what is the value of n1 by n2 must be a integer type question n1 by n2 is equal to 8 okay <coughs> you can solve it by this method also by the help of uh, equation n equal to n into e to the power minus lambda t also now they are saying alpha particle proton accelerated from the rest under the potential difference of 200 volt the ratio of de broglie wavelength you know that the de broglie wavelength is given by h by p p can be written as mv and uh, mv uh, can be written under root 2 mk and uh, 2 mk can be written as qb okay so this is the relation for 2 under root 2 mqb so they want to know what is the de broglie for proton and what is for alpha so for uh, if you write this value it will be like h and uh, v will be cancel and above relation 2 m alpha q alpha And two m p q p two two is also cancelled. H and V are same. <coughs> m alpha divided by m p is there, and q alpha divided by q p. We know it very well that the mass of proton is m. You can write alpha as four m, and for alpha charges uh, for proton is charge e. For alpha charges two e. You can cancel e and root four into two. The two root two is the answer. Value lambda p by lambda alpha two root two. Okay, there we have written this question in printed form also. Now they want to know what is the. Uh, this question is based on uh, YDSE. Okay, they are saying uh, width of one slit is uh, let's say width of one slit W one by W two is three. Then W two is equal to three W one. Okay. And the second width, uh, second is more wider, and they are saying amplitude is proportional to W. That means if this amplitude is A, amplitude of second is three. Okay. Now you want to know uh, what is the maximum intensity. You know it very well. When you use constructive interference, amplitude simply add up. That is three A plus A is four A. At the point where we get destructive interference, there is an Difference of amplitude three a minus a is simply two a, and intensity is proportional to a square. So the maximum intensity is related to the four a, some constant to four a square, sixteen a square, and for minimum I can say intensity is c into a two a whole square that is four a square. If we divide as the i maximum by minimum will be like sixteen by four, or ratio will be four is to one. Okay, now so we see. This is the answer in printed form also. A one equal two x, a two equal three x. If you add them, you will get four x. If you subtract them, you will get two x, and the ratio will be like sixteen is to four and four is to one. Now, <clears throat> intensity of the uh, after passing through a polaroid is hundred lumen. Now, this same polaroid is loaded by thirty degree. Its axis then find new intensity passing through it. Very interesting question. If you are using a one polaroid, only one polaroid, okay, then. If here is intensity I not, then after passing through this polaroid, intensity will decrease by by two. That means this intensity is if this intensity is hundred, then before the uh, polaroid intensity will be like two hundred. Okay. Now they are saying uh, if I rotate this, it doesn't matter. Okay. It will uh, uh, give the same effect because it will pass those vibration which are parallel to the Uh, polarizing axis, same here. So you will get same intensity, but different vibration by not by two. There will be no change in the intensity if you rotate single polaroid. Single polaroid is uh, not in the discussion of Malus law. Huh? If you are using second polaroid and you are rotating that axis, then you can say I not cos square theta. Answer will be like hundred lumen here. Now 
the saying spectral lines of atoms are in which of the following statement for spectral line A, B, and C. A uh, is the A is for one. So this is a series limit for Lyman. That means uh, C is cancelled out. B is the B sub bomber. Okay. This is first bomber, the second bomber, the third bomber. So third second line is the third line of bomber. Okay. The third line of bomber. And also it will be like, I think it is third line of bomber. And uh, C is the is the partial series, second line of partial. So series of Lyman, third of Bama, series of Lyman, third of Bama, second of partial. The answer will be A here. Okay. D probably will the proton varies inversely with linear momentum. Of course, it is correct. Lambda equal to H by T. Okay. Inverse variation. As lambda increases, momentum increases. If you're increasing the, if your uh, momentum is decreasing, then you can say wavelength is increasing. So one is true and second is false. Then answer will be A here. Now, the Broglie wavelength of uh, alpha particle and proton. I think they are assuming this is alpha particle. Yes, this is alpha particle and proton are equal. The ratio of their velocity. You know it very well. If you're saying that lambda are same, okay, that means lambda is equal to h by p. Momentums are same. Momentum of what? Uh, alpha particle, V alpha, and momentum of proton, Vp. Okay. Now, you know it very well that the mass of alpha is four times of mass of proton. Then V alpha, Vp, and cancel. And then if you're asking V alpha by Vp, this value will be like one is to four. Okay. Answer will be A in this scenario. It's also in written format. De Broglie wavelength are same, the momentum must be same, and velocity must be in the inverse ratio of mass. For which of the for which of the following transition in the hydrogen atom of the frequency of emitted proton will be maximum? Okay. <clears throat> now here, uh, which of the following transition in hydrogen-like atom of the frequency emitted frequency is maximum? So just uh, plot uh, one. Two, three, four, five. They are asking a frequency in which the gap is maximum. I think between two to one gap is maximum. The, yeah, the emitted frequency will be maximum. Okay. Next. Next set of accelerating potential is given a 1.24 M volt. You know it very well. The cutoff wavelength is given by 1242 divided by operating voltage. Okay. And uh, the answer will be nanometer. And 1242 divided by 1.24 10 to the power of 6. The answer will be in 10 to the power of minus 4 nanometer or 10 to the power of minus 3 nanometer. This is given written form 10 to the power of minus 3 nanometer. Okay. Which of the most separate regarding Bohr model speed? V equal to C by 137 Z by N. One is correct. Uh, Coulombic force and tantric energy is uh, R S C Z square by N square. Four is correct. Frequency of oscillation is I think N cube by Z square. <coughs> You're saying speed is Z band frequency of Z square R S C Z square by N square. The four is correct, and I think uh, frequency of oscillation is like uh, complete time period. Uh, 0.53 n square by z and uh, speed is c by 137 z by n. This value will be n cube by z square. This is for time period and for frequency it will be z square by n cube. I think answer will be like 1 and 4. Okay. Next. Proton and neutron are moving on the circular path with the same as you find the ratio of de Broglie women lambda e by lambda p. Okay. Uh, proton electron dono same circular path pe same speed se travel kar rahe. They want to know what is the de Broglie wavelength. The de Broglie wavelength depend upon lambda equal to h by mv. And they are saying they are moving the same speed. Okay, then it will only depends upon the mass. The answer is 1836 and a option. If electron of hydrogen jumps from n equal to 2 to n equal to 1, they're jumping from n equal to 2 to 1. Okay. 
we want to know what is the wavelength of release photon. This energy is minus, and this energy is simply minus 13.6. This is minus 3.4. The gap of 10.2 nanometers is there. If you are releasing photon, we would like energy. Wavelength will lambda equal to 1 to 4 to divide by energy, 10.2, and answer will be nanometer. The approximately 123 nanometer will be the answer. Answer will be 123, or you can solve in complete terms, we'll get the answer. Okay. Answer will be approximately 121.5 nanometer. In photoelectric effect of certain metal, the stopping potential is 0.7 volt. The wavelength of radiation is 491 nanometer. The stopping potential comes out to 1.43, the wavelength of the instant radiation. Now they are comparing these two. Okay. Now you know it very well the stopping potential EV1 by EV2 equal to SC by lambda minus phi and SC by lambda minus phi. Okay. Done. Now you know it very well. That in first case, uh, stopping potential of 0.71, next case 1.42. Okay. And uh, in first case, energy was 1242 divided by 491 minus 5. Okay. Now you cannot divide it, you have to use complete discussion. Uh, the stopping potential is 0.71, that means K maximum equal to E into 0 0.71. The wavelength of incident radiation was 142 divided by 491 minus phi. From this value, you can phi, find phi in electron volt. Now, if a stopping potential is 1.43, a kinetic energy maximum is E into 1.43. Energy of the radiation is given by 1243 divided by lambda, and you have already solved the value of phi. You, by subtracting, you can find the answer. And it is written here 1242 divided by 491, phi plus 0 0.7, and 1242 is divide by lambda 5 plus 1.3. You subtract 5 and get the answer of lambda. Next, for X-ray, if its wavelength is 10 angstrom, the mass of the particle having same energy, same wavelength as X-ray is XH by 3 in the value. Okay. Now, they're saying, <coughs> uh, for X-ray, X is uh, basically electromagnetic ray. Then from the mass of the particle has same energy and same wavelength as X-ray is XH by 3. There is some point is, okay, see here. They're basically, they are saying the energy of uh, X-ray is equal to half mv square. SC by lambda is equal to, uh, we can write m square v square by 2m. And uh, if we replace mv, you will like uh, mv is equal to H by lambda. So m square v square will be like h square by lambda square. No doubt the here lambda is g probably equivalent lambda square. Okay, h is cancel. m is equal to h by 2 lambda c and mass is given by mass of the moving particle is 5 h by 3. Okay, now h is free to move and its electron is in n equal to 5. Find the recoil speed when it's jump from n equal to 1 to 5 to 1. Okay, <clears throat> so it's like this. When you jump from 5 to 1, okay, these are energy levels, but this is minus 13.6, this is minus 3.4, this is minus 1.5, this is minus 0.83, this is minus 0.54, okay. We're jumping from this to this. The energy release, you can solve it very well. The energy release is SC by lambda is equal to E5 minus E1. By the help of lambda, uh, by the help of this value, H by lambda, you can find the momentum of photon, which is released. Okay, momentum of photon is given by E5 minus E1 divided by C. Now, if momentum of photon is H by lambda in this direction, then mass of the particle is M and it is recoiling the speed V. So by conservation momentum, you can say MV is equal to H by lambda and uh, recoiling speed will be like H by M lambda here. Uh, H by lambda is simply E5 minus E1 divided by MC. Simply E5 minus E1 divided by MC is the answer. Okay, you can solve in value. See here, E5 minus E1 is 13.06. The required speed is delta E by MC, and that value comes to 4.35 meter per second. No doubt, the mass you will place here is the mass of the atom, hydrogen atom. Okay, now activity of the sample is 
a at t1 and a by 5 and t2 then find the average life okay do you want to know what is the average life here it's very simple here first you should know what is the value of average life. average life is 1 by lambda okay and uh, if you write activity is a is equal to a naught e to the power minus lambda t1 and uh, <coughs> a by 5 activity is a naught e to the power minus lambda t2 okay now you are interested in basically uh, lambda you will divide all the things you will get 5 is equal to uh, e to the power lambda t2 minus t1 done if you take log you will get log 5 is equal to lambda into t2 minus t1 and 1 by lambda is equal to t2 minus t1 divided by log 5 base e now this value is average or mean life that is t2 minus t1 divided by log 5 base e okay this is the relation for this question next if lambda 1 represents the wavelength third line of lambda series lambda 2 is the first of partial find the ratio of lambda 1 by lambda 2 the lambda 1 by lambda 2 is basically uh, sc by delta e 1 and sc by delta e 2 okay ssc cancel basically delta e 2 divided by delta e 1 now you have to find the energy gap these for these two lines lyman third line of Lyman okay this is your first line of Lyman second line third line that means e4 minus e1 okay e4 minus e1 and for uh, second of passion second of passion is for uh, 3 to 2 or 4 to 2 this is e4 minus e2 the ratio is given by e4 minus e2 divided by e4 minus e1 okay and e4 minus e2 sorry e4 minus uh, first in first case e4 minus e1 in the second case you will have first line of question the first line of question will be like e3 minus e2 okay e3 minus e2 divided by e4 minus e1 okay e4 e3 minus e2 if you write so this value will be like 1 by 9 minus 1 by 4 all other terms will be cancelled 1 by 16 minus 1 okay uh, just solve the value 4 minus 9 uh, that is 5 divided by 36 and uh, 1 by 16 and 15 15 we add by third 16 okay 5 by 15 into 16 divided by 36 so this value will be like uh, I think answer like 1 by 9 oh, 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 oh. this value is e3 minus e2 so some calculation mistake is there mm -hmm. we can try it again see here maybe my discussion is going fast that's why some mistake there i'm repeating it again see here uh, sc by lambda one is for third line of lyman the third line of lyman is basically um, this line 4 to 1 sc by lambda is 4 to 1 that means 1 minus 1 by 16 done now this thing you have to compare with another one you can say c into 1 minus 1 by 16 some constants are there in sc by lambda 2 first of partial first line of partial First line of partial line from 4 to 3. Okay. So 4 to 3. C into 1 minus 1 by 16. C into E3 minus E4. Okay. 4 to 3. Up to the value of 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 the value by the value of and uh, 7 divided by 9 into 16. 16, 16 cancel. 9 into 15 divided by 7. That is 135 by 7. And this value is lambda 2 by lambda 1. They are asking about lambda 1 by lambda 2. The answer will be 7 by 135. Okay. These were the questions asked in 
modern physics and uh, wave optics in February session of JE mains 2021. We can say we can focus on some good question on X-ray. Okay. Rest questions are based mainly based on uh, uh, Bohr model and simple radioactivity discussions. Okay. So just concentrating on these uh, topics and for next J means if you're preparing for modern physics and wave optics, you should concentrate on these topics. These are important topics. Okay. <clears throat> 